Hello friends, today I'm going to be showing you the process of this Animal Crossing Nooklink store that I did recently. I tried to get all the Animal Crossing vibes in there. I'm really glad and excited with how it turned out. Um, I've got everything set out here. I started putting the washi tape down um, onto the paper. I don't really know why I do this other than I saw other people do it and I really like the end result of having those straight borders. It also helps with keeping your paper in the same place, although I do recommend doing this on a different surface. I did it on an old canvas that I haven't really painted over yet. Um, that way if I need to move the painting around at all I can. Uh, I put down a quick sketch, just really, really light lines, and then I started putting down a really light sort of base color of a really, really light yellow. Um, I really like the vibe of this because it gives the painting more of that summery, almost, um, I don't know, just like very cozy Animal Crossing vibes that I feel I get from the game. I kind of feel like this step was somewhat unnecessary. Um, I do like that the yellow kind of blended in with all of my colors um, that I first put down. However, most of this gets covered up and I'm not really sure how much of a difference it actually made in the end result. I started mixing up my sky color and I really just used mostly the based blue that I started with with my uh, gouache paints i'm not really sure how to pronounce it um but I, I yeah i just kind of went in with a very very basic blue i mixed it in a little bit with white and you can kind of see it mixing in with that base yellow as well which wasn't necessarily what i was going for but i, I do really like how it turned out sort of trying to blend it out a little bit with water uh, this is one of my very first attempts of using this kind of paint after a little bit of practice and so i'm not really 100 percent sure uh, how to handle it correctly and exactly what I'm doing for real, but <laughs> uh, I started working on the country fence. If you play the game, if you play Animal Crossing New Horizons, this is one of the fences that is in the game and a really, really popular one as well. It's a, it's really, really just cozy kind of cottage core vibes with this country fence. And so I thought that I would add it into this painting um, leading up into the nook shop. I've got to say, I probably should have waited to put down this fence, to be completely honest, since it is a pretty dark color. I could have covered up any of the grass that I decided to put underneath it, and it actually um, created a little bit of problems when I was going in with the grass, and kind of just my details and stuff were, were all kind of hard to maneuver because this fence was put down very early on in the painting. I am also noticing that I took a really long time here to mix up this paint. I think I was going for a very uh, a darker brown than I had already put down and I, I think that that was my problem as I started off with such a dark color early on and um, but but it's okay. I ended up working it out. I got some more details onto the fence. Uh, but it was definitely a hassle mixing up those paints and I think that's just another thing I'm gonna have to get used to. Uh, since I, you know, this is one of my very first paintings using the gouache paint and really painting at all. So it's just something that I'll definitely get uh, more knowledgeable on the more that I do it. Here I am trying to mix up a good color for the dirt path that is going to be um, in the main foreground of the painting and also towards... Um, that sort of background area with the nook shop back there. I went in just with kind of the basic shape. I had the idea of, um, if you play the game at all, the path. The path is a very popular pathway that is used in Animal Crossing and it's pretty much just a pathway that allows you to do um, diagonal paths in the game that look really good and, and fluid and they also tend to have very jagged edges and so I was kind of going for that as well. 
um, while putting down the pathway here in the in the foreground and then went in and tried to go in with a lighter color I definitely had way too much water I think on my on my canvas but it started to dry up pretty quickly I think that's one thing that I really like about this paint is that it dries pretty quickly onto the paper especially if you apply it um, with less water than you would I think with watercolor paints or I don't know I really only have experience with the watercolor painting um, but I, I really do like the squash paint because it's it's similar but it's also um, more opaque I think than watercolor and it's really really fun to work with and really really forgiving as well I mix up a dark green here and started going in with the grass here you can see me kind of struggling with getting that grass around the fence and this is exactly why I think the fence should have gone on um, a little bit later into the painting but it turned out okay I just blocked out the colors pretty much and then went in later with more details um, doing this bottom part and I do like how this part looked the most however I kind of went over it later on with more details which is okay I do like this being the the start of our little area up here I tried to make it look like there was maybe trees in the background I think it really just looks like grass but it's okay <laughs> Uh, I went in a little bit more with this area here. I was kind of confused on this area. I wasn't necessarily sure what it should have looked like. Um, I almost wanted to put like a pond here or something. I think it would have looked really, really nice. Um, but I ended up just filling it all the way in because I... <laughs> I wasn't really sure what I was doing with this painting. Here you see me mixing up a lighter purple color and I started applying it on the bottom left of this painting. I wanted to do little hyacinths which are a flower that are in the game um, and I, I did like how they looked at first and then I added more details later on in the painting and I actually ended up like almost completely covering these flowers. <laughs> I then started working on the nook shop. Now I gotta say this is probably the thing I struggled with the most in this painting. I never really painted buildings in any of my past like practice paintings so this was definitely a, a new adventure for me. Uh, I actually quickly started it and then quickly started working on something else because it was it was something that I wasn't quite ready for at this point into the painting. I then started adding more details to the fence. I think that this is probably the point in the painting which I actually should have started the fence, but I think that it turned out okay. I mixed up my blue and a little bit of white and I decided I was going to take on clouds. Uh, <laughs> I also kind of use these clouds to cover up some of the imperfections that happened in the sky while the paint dried. Uh, you see a little bit of yellow bleeding in and a little bit of that green bleeding in as well. Um, so I was trying to just kind of go over the sky and cover up those imperfections. Again, like I said, this is a good thing about the gouache paint that I was using is it's really, really easy and really, really forgiving to to cover up your mistakes that you make um, all the time throughout the entire painting. I put sort of a base shape of the cloud that I wanted and then I started going in with a lighter, almost white color um, to highlight and accentuate and let you know that it is indeed a cloud. <laughs> I started mixing in the green color that I had used for the grass with a yellow to give it sort of a warmer look and I really like how this turned out um, to add just little details to the grass. wasn't necessarily sure what I was going for. I kind of wanted some of it to look like little flowers and some of it to just look like the sun highlighting on the grass that was already there. Went in a little bit and I started blending in this green a little bit as I got into higher points in the painting. Um, I definitely turned a lot of the grass behind this fence post into that sort of blended green look and definitely the grass that was in the very back as well. 
I went in with a couple more details of the lighter yellowy green color, um, made sure to add some grass strands here and there, some little dots to look like little flowers, and I really like how it turned out. This is where I started adding more details to that front grass little patch there. I tried to add what looked like larger grass blades, I guess. Um, I ended up going over this as well. I definitely redid this area in the painting a couple times. Here I start mixing up a red color to do a door for the little shop um, and this is definitely the start of the struggle. The main issue I had with this shop was not really gauging how many details needed to be there. I eventually decided that less detail was good since it was further away from your perspective of the painting. Um, but I also had issues with water. I was using a lot of water in this very small area and I was not waiting for my paint to dry. I was very, very impatient during this shop and I think that's really the downfall of it in itself. Uh, definitely wait for your paint to dry before you try adding more details and more colors on top of uh, solids and it's definitely something that I learned from during this painting process. Started going in with a blue color for the roof. Um, I definitely had issues with the shape of the roof and I tried to elongate it a little bit here. Here I start mixing up what I wanted to be an orange color for the little shingles on the windows, um, which is definitely, like I said, like this entire freaking shop was an entire struggle for me. Definitely something that was new, um, but I definitely had a lot of fun with it and I most importantly learned a lot from this process. I'm probably going to speed through a little bit of this here because I pretty much just went over it and over it and over it and over it and over it. I'd like to take this time to let you guys know if you guys wanted to see this painting process live at all i do plan on doing some painting streams over on my twitch channel there will be a link down in the description below and if you guys are interested at all in looking in my process of paintings i do have a patreon as well which i will be posting paintings to and possibly doing giveaways for some of my paintings so stay tuned for that as well I got tired of working on the house or the shop and it not working out so I started adding little details here and there um, throughout the painting, getting more of my details on the fence and in the grass, more in the foreground of the painting done. I also started adding some darker details to the pathway to give it more depth and dimension um, and basically just blended in most of those details that I had put in. Um, I do like adding a little bit of pressure onto the area that I'm working on because it kind of lifts up some of the paint I've noticed um, and I definitely did that a lot in this path. What I did right here was really really weird but it ended up working out well anyways. I used the end of my brush, not the paint brush part, but I used the, the end, the tip of it to kind of blend in the paint a little bit on this house here. I like how it... Um, definitely blended it together a little bit and I just went over the front of the shop again because it was looking all sorts of funky. I started adding small highlights to the roof, kind of giving it that shingled look or at least attempting to. Um, just adding that lighter blue color to the roof. <laughs> you see me trying to dry it out quickly because I was getting very impatient. 
started adding this blue over to the flowers that I added earlier into the painting, just giving them little, little details here and there. Here I started blocking out the windows on the door and also the windows in the shop walls itself. I used sort of a darker color for this, so I was just getting the basic shape out for the windows until I went in with a lighter color here. Um, like I said, I, I probably should have waited longer. The paint was moving very, very fluidly because <laughs> uh, of all the water that I had had down and all the paint that was already there. Started going in with the shop sign. Um, this was probably the most awkward part, I think, of the shop itself. Uh, you saw a little bit of the blue from the roof bleeding in a little bit and I just kind of poured more paint and more paint onto it until it looked, it looked okay. I think the biggest issue I had with this shop sign was probably the outline on it. I think that I probably should have gone in with this red color first as the base shape and then filled that in with the lighter bluish color that I had for the, shot, the sign and the windows. Um, I think it turned out okay. I actually like the smudged look that I have of it because I didn't want to put too many details into the shop and I think that this was a good way of doing that. I actually ended up going over the door again because I wasn't liking how it was looking out and it was bleeding through so I just went over with that red. I used this red to also add a little path of flowers alongside the dirt path that we have. Um, and I really like that I started doing this because it gave me an idea for this foreground grass patch, the very front grass patch that you see. I started adding bigger flowers in this area um, with more detail so that you can um, tell that that's in the very front of your view. I like how it turned out a lot. I went in with a little green color for the stems and I used that green color again to add more grass path. And this is kind of what I was going for uh, when I had put that darker color down in that area at first. I used that darker color to go in a little bit in the background as well and add some little details here and there. I ended up adding a little bush over on the right side. You see that right here. I added in a little bush there because I wasn't really sure what to do with the area. It looked kind of empty and I wanted to fill it with something. I added little details by adding a little bit of yellow to the green that I was using uh, to highlight that bush area and to also highlight a little bit of the other grass as well. This is when I decided to go in with the actual shingles in front of the windows on the shop. I think that it was a decent time to do it, but I still probably should have waited for that paint to dry a little bit before I put any colors down. You can see some of the orange bleeding down into the window, but it's okay because I do like the blurred effect and sort of the perspective that it gives the painting no matter what. There was a lot of times watching over this video that I'm seeing, I just definitely needed to wait for the paint to dry. Um, I ended up going over the front of this shop again, um, but before that I decided to do a little bit of details on the shop sign up top, which I do like how that turned out. It's probably my favorite part of the shop. You see me blending in a little bit of the colors in the front of the shop, which didn't really work. It just made it a big mess. So I decided to go in with this even lighter yellowy color for the shop front and just fill in all of that area again. I redid this shop so many times. I definitely should have taken some time, I think, just to step away. Um, not only to let the paint dry, but to also kind of get a grasp on what I was doing. I started going in with a paper towel to get some of that excess paint off. I also did this a little bit to kind of blend in that yellow and red color on the shop sign. I do like how it turned out and it did dry up the paint enough where I could put the windows back on with this lighter blue color that I'm mixing up here. Try to mix it in a little bit with my purple from yesterday's painting. I don't think it made much of a difference. Uh, here I did the basic shapes of the shop windows. Try to clear up those edges a little bit on the door frame as well because they were bleeding through a little bit. 
I went in a bit with that same color and I added some more details to the clouds and I also added some more clouds over on the other side of the painting which I think looked really really good. Um, I was just kind of trying to cover up the mistakes in the sky that were made previously. Here I pretty much just tried to clean up my lines a little bit, especially on that shop, add some, some blended colors in to make it more cohesive, and I pretty much just spent the rest of this painting adding in more little details and trying to accent what needed to be accented, highlight what needed to be highlighted, and just kind of go over and add any last details that I had. Okay, this is literally my favorite part, um, but I was peeling off the washi tape. Really just love the almost photograph feeling that this gives the painting. Um, it's very, very therapeutic, I think, and definitely my favorite part of the painting process at all. Look at that! Uh, Alright, thank you guys so much for watching this painting video. Uh, this is something that I have just started doing, but I'm really enjoying it and I can't wait to incorporate it into my Twitch streams and also into some YouTube content as well. Thank you guys so much for watching this video um, and I will see you guys next time.